Here we go. Okay, so <clears throat> once you're finished with your animation, now one of the important things is you want to run through this and you want to make sure everything is top notch, everything's perfect, you don't want to have any mistakes because if you do, you can't fix it after this step. You have to go back, fix it, and then redo this step. And that can be a little frustrating, um, <clears throat> but it's not a big deal. What you want to do is export it into a QuickTime uh, movie. Well, not really a QuickTime movie. That's a, that's a Mac. That's the old Mac person in me uh, speaking. Um, you're going to put it into an MPEG-4, basically. So we're going to go to export, and this is where it gets a little confusing. You can export movie or you can export video. We want to export video. It's actually the problem. Um, and <clears throat> right here, it should the render size will be set to the size of your stage. So if you set it to 1920 by 1080, uh, then it will be right there. So you don't want to change the size at all. Um, and you want to make sure that you're converting the video in Adobe Media Encoder. You want to stop exporting when the last frame is reached. And you want to put, you want to place this uh, in your Media Students folder. So you're going to click Browse. You're going to click My PC um, or this PC. And then you're going to choose the Media Students folder and then your folder and so on and so forth. Or I mean, I suppose you could put it on the hard drive or wherever, but um, we're going to do it here. So now I'm going to hit the export button, okay? And it's going to tell me that that file already exists because I already went through this once. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to hit yes. Uh, and then it's going to give you a little error about QuickTime needing to be uh, installed. We're not going to bother with that, so don't show again. We don't need QuickTime. Uh, QuickTime is basically abandoned by Apple anyway. Um, so we don't need it, we don't want it, we're going to just do it without. So now what it's going to do is it's building your Flash content. Depending upon how many scenes you have and how long your animation is, this can take a decent num amount of time. Um, you know, not too long, maybe a minute or two. Uh, it's not too bad. And then what it's going to do is it's going to open up a new app, which it's not doing yet, called Adobe Media Encoder. Um, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to choose our settings in Adobe Media Encoder for the project that we've got. So this is Adobe Media Encoder, and it, everything is set up for you except here where it says preset. We're going to click custom, and it's going to open up. Why is this so big? Anyway, it's going to open up uh, um, the settings for Adobe Media Encoder. And over here, this is where we're going to want to change some things. <clears throat> the best thing to do is you hit match source which should reset everything. That's, that's good. Um, and then down here at the bottom, you want to change it from a one pass to a two pass. And I'll do screenshots and post this on my website for you. And then what I like to do for 1080p video, now this is a 720, but for 1080p video, I like to increase the bit rate a little bit. I will make the max about 21 or so, and then I'll make the, the target bit rate about 18. And that seems to make nice, high-quality video because you're still compressing this a little bit. You can even go in here and type it in. You're still compressing it a little bit, but um, it works really well. And then you want to check maximum depth and the maximum render quality right there. That's basically it. You don't need to worry about audio because we don't have any audio in these clips. Um, you don't have to worry about any effects. You basically just want to take the uh, the bitrate settings and increase them a little bit to make them higher quality. Basically, the VBR is variable bitrate, and two pass means that it's going to go through your animation twice. The first time it's going to encode it, it's just going to do it at a base level, and it's going to look for areas of fast motion uh, or high complexity when your animation might need a little bit more or less compression. Um, and then the second time, having gone through it the first time, it's going to re-encode portions of the movie uh, with the understanding that it's, it, it knows where there are certain places which might need less or greater amounts of compression to give it a better look. So two-pass is actually really, really important. Um, and then you're going to target increasing your target bit rate. Um, what that means is the amount of data per second, essentially. And that, again, helps the quality a lot. And we want these to be nice, high quality. So we're going to boost those up a little bit. And then the maximum depth and the maximum render quality, those both, again, help it be the best quality you possibly can get. And then look at here. Estimated file size, 
even by increasing all this, is only 19 megabytes, okay? So they're going to be pretty small. Um, you know, you can, you can do a lot. And then you can also scrub through here and just kind of make sure that everything looks good, okay? Um, and it does. And uh, once we're good to go on that, you click OK. So, you know, you kind of scrub through everything. You can kind of see what's happening. This is that animation of the guy tripping over the uh, perfectly cylindrical boulder. Um, <clears throat> and then you're going to click OK. Done, done. And then what you're going to do is over here, boy, I'm not seeing the whole thing. Here, over here, there's a play button. And you're just going to hit the play button. Boom. And it's going to go through and it's going to render it once gets halfway, and then you'll see it render through the movie twice, and then it's done. So literally for that 10 second animation, you can see how fast it was. Um, and uh, you know, for a longer animation, if you've got a bunch of scenes, it may be a little bit more. Now if I get out of here, and I go back and I look, there's my demo that I just rendered, and you can even see that it, uh, nope, that's not it. Where is it? Well, maybe I didn't put it in this folder. Um, <clears throat> but what I do recommend, oh no, here it is. What I do recommend that you do is watch through it and make sure that there's no uh, problems with the movie. Um, one of the things that I've had in the past, and, and animate, animate has gotten so much better with this, but the old version of Flash, there used to be all sorts of artifacts in there. It would glitch if you were using inverse kinematics. It wouldn't render correctly. There were all sorts of problems. So I really recommend that you go through and you watch your video, make sure everything looks good. Then once you've done that, I will show you later on how we take your animation and we put it in a different program called Adobe Premiere, and we will do simple things like you can change colors a little bit or you can do some other special effects, but more importantly, we can put music to your animation and edit the music a little bit and cut it and then make a final product that will be fun to watch as well as listen to. Any questions? All right, nice and simple. Let's get working.